Hi everyone, it's Simon here with a review of Cara the Game. Cara the Game is a PlayStation 4 exclusive and comes from the PS Talent selection. The PS Talent selection is a funding stream that's set up in Spain to help independent game companies get a small bit of funding so that they can get their game to market, but it will be a PlayStation 4 exclusive as a result. There's been a few decent games that have come out from this, all very much rough around the edges, but have really unique and different experiences and tales. And I reviewed Masira, which is one of these PlayStation talent games a few weeks back. Um, that came out after Kara, but they kind of came out roughly at the same time. This is the other one that I wanted to review. Car of the Game is a 3D platformer um, that reminds me a little bit of Rhyme, which is an amazing game, go by that. Um, a little bit of Tomb Raider, but with much more frustration and lack of finesse. <laughs> um, the game itself is really lopsided in terms of its delivery, but there's the seeds of something really good there, which is why I'm kind of like, keep going at it and have. I'd like to see a car or two where things are much more refined, and I'll be really on board with that, I think, if it goes quite well. However, with Kara the game itself, you control the titular character Kara um, and her affinity with water as she goes across three worlds with three bosses to smash her way to save the world. All of her attacks are water-based, so you've got square for a light attack which like splashes an enemy, <laughs> um, admittedly at close range. Then triangle gives like a little mini wave, and if you press and hold triangle, you'll get like a spinny tornado of water that will go around, and that will cause a good bit of area damage. Um, outside of that, you'll then start to get additional uh, skills that are given to you by your mother, who flies in as a bird, tells you all about how you're going to save the world, and that you must do that, my dear, because you're stronger than you think you are. Gives you a skill, flops off again. So nice, nice one, mother. Thank you. <laughs> um, but some of them are quite cool so you can set up clones of yourself that are like water statues um, but they also act as bombs so sometimes you need to get through like a half broken wall so you place a clone of yourself there and then use a water arrow to smash and blow up your your clone to get through the wall and that was quite a good idea and there's quite a few puzzles that are based around your bow and arrow and it might be that actually um, and some of the stuff that I really, really liked was where you had to set up clones of yourself to like um, let enemies or statues kind of look at you in one direction. And then you'd run around the back and shoot them and like turn on their switch or off their switch at the back of their back or on their back, sorry, behind. And that was quite good in the way how some of that was implemented and sorted out. And in general, the puzzles are the best bit of Kara. When it comes to the actual action themselves, the bosses have relatively predictable patterns once you work them out um, and you can kind of avoid them. However, the hit detection in this game is atrocious. Um, and so sometimes you th you won't be hit, but it will think you have been or it will like take damage to the enemy, even though you're nowhere near them. Sometimes enemies will get stuck in walls. I've had it where puzzles where I've fallen through the floor and I'm stuck underneath a building and I've had to restart the game. The collision detection and the hit detection and the area boundaries of levels are not good in this game, so expect frustration from that regard. Um, back to the AI though, um, it doesn't like particularly with like the hack and slashy type enemies, they're pretty poor. Um, sometimes they don't even spawn properly, so you're just like what. Um, and I wish there was more time to spend just finessing some of that because it really does let the game experience down. When it comes to the puzzles though, there's some good stuff as I've mentioned already before. I also quite liked it when it started to play with water levels. Um, and I always find this quite fascinating that when a water level rises and falls it changes the aesthetic of the game around it. However, this is also where quite a lot of the bugs came in with the game. Where I'd fall through the floor and it would think that I was under the water and it didn't realise that I was on top of the water, that kind of stuff. I also liked it when I was able to freeze the water as well to try and create paths for me to run around. It did kind of mean that you'd have to kind of stack stuff up. Which leads to the poor platforming because the platforming is really imprecise uh, and slow and clogged, uh, um, clunky. So just be aware that you'll have some frustration getting through. Although it is a short game. It's only three hours. There's no collectibles or anything like that. So if you just complete the game, you get the platinum, which is quite nice, actually, because um, it's like an experience that once it's done, you're like, cool, done. I can kind of move on with that now. I didn't necessarily need or want replayability. What I did want was more finesse uh, and more music, actually. The music in this game is really, really cool. It just loops really, really quickly. 
and it gets janky sometimes between transitions. So when enemies appear, you'll have like nice serene um, acoustic guitar -y type music in the background. And all of a sudden it'll go bom 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 and then it'll get confused and likes trying to play multiple tracks at the same time. And I was like, don't like this remix. <laughs> However, you know me, I like me a treasure game. One of my favorite games of all time is still um, Tomb Raider 4 on PlayStation 1 where it took place entirely in Egypt in the pyramids. I love this type of um, setting. I love puzzles in this type of vein. So the seeds of something are there, but I'd really like to see a Cara 2 with refined controls, less game breaking bugs, uh, and a bit more variety in terms of puzzles and AI combat. And I think actually Cara could end up being quite a decent series if it wanted to be. So thank you very much for watching. Any comments or questions, leave them below. I'd recommend this one on a sale, no more. Um, and only if you're interested in like finding really unrefined indies where there's a jewel of something good in there, but it's wrapped in a lot of lot, a lot of roughness. If you have the choice though between this and Masira, I would recommend Masira of the two. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you need anything below and uh, toodle pips. Happy gaming. This channel is just one of my many projects that cover games, music and film. If you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.